Ladies and gentlemen, welcome or welcome back to the Purple Kurt podcast. My name is Kurt Hoffman. I'll be your host. And with me again, the return of Mr. Martin Ware. Hey. Into the Electroverse we shall go, boys and girls. <laughs> we'll just let this go for a little bit. Oh, Kurt, I love this version. He's so elemental. It, it, well, and, and the, uh, so that was actually a little bit of vanity on my part there. Um, I, I hadn't picked, I haven't picked up the bass in a while and I just, I was supposed to go for a run yesterday and I decided what the hell I'm going to, um, I'm going to, um, <laughs> I'm going to do a version of being boiled. It's going so well. It's going really well. Well, so what I did was is, uh, for those who listened to that or saw my Facebook page, if you haven't seen it, I, I just decided what the hell. Uh, it's basically an Ibanez micro bass. I went through a Zoom, not not our Zoom calls, but Zoom, the company that makes Japanese uh, uh, bass effect pedals, and I use a bass synth sound, and I plugged right into my micro cube, my Roland micro cube, and just right. and I have a loop feature, so I did the whole thing did it on a, as you know. Oh yeah, you you're a clever guy. You know. I wish I was 10 years older and we'd met at a different time in a different place, Martin. That's all. No, I'm gonna say I wish that. I was 10 years younger. <laughs> <laughs> Even this out. <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, um, behind my background screen here is a, uh, a promotion from Martin's uh, gallery opening. I say, say soundscape immersion gallery opening at the Oculus in New York City, and I had the honor and privilege of being invited by yours truly over there on the other side of the screen. Um, on May 4th was a, a, a premier private event uh, for his uh, soundscape presentation that's going to be all, all month long up to June 5th at the Oculus C1, is it Concourse West, I believe? And it's over... Hey, no, 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 it's South Concourse. South Concourse, thank you. Actually, if you all know your hand creams, it's right next to the Kiehl's uh, <laughs> shop. Oh, they've got great high-end creams. Sponsored by Kiehl's. Sponsored by Well, it actually is is sponsored by. Would you care to Would you care to give me the rest of the uh, details on that, Martin? Uh, uh, well, uh, on on what? Sorry, the, uh, the who sponsored the the, 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 the uh, uh, sponsored? Right. Well, the actual exhibition itself is sponsored by um, Monitor Audio Group. Monitor Audio. Uh, yeah, who kindly gave us all the kind of audio equipment. It sounds absolutely amazing. Um, and they are, they've been very kind. They also helped with some, well, a lot of the expenses for the, uh, for, for the exhibition. And also um, it's at a place called NYC Culture Club. Culture Club. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's um, Clayton and, uh, and Parker who are run a not-for-profit uh arts organization that that puts on exhibitions uh, kind of more out there exhibitions i suppose yeah and um, but it's it's all supported by the um ultimately by the people who run the world trade center which is great yeah um and they've been very very kind and supportive and when i put the word out to find somewhere in the world to put on our uh, 3d sound exhibition based on yeah. the on the uh electronically yours podcast um they were the first to respond and it was in fact um a guy called joe woolhead uh who's a very famous photographer mm -hmm. who's going to be on my podcast soon oh brilliant um, who's like probably the world's leading expert on the world trade center in terms of photography he's wow. taken like thirty thousand photos uh for the last i think 30 years Wow. Uh, and um, he's incredible. Uh, and he's such a sweet guy. Irish, of course. And uh, like that. And uh, as I say, that's going to be an amazing episode of the podcast. He contacted me because he's a fan of the podcast. Yeah. And said, um, you might be interested in this venue in the World Trade Center. Wow. Uh, and that was before anybody in the UK has offered anything. Yeah, and wow. I thought, this is definitely um, 
uh, serendipity. So I thought I've got to jump on this. And that's why I ended up doing it there. And I'm so thrilled. It's turned out really well. So you, you tell me what you think. Okay. So, I mean, I was actually there Saturday. And again, Martin, I, I can't thank you enough. You know, I, 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 I found my tribe. <laughs> so I really, I, 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 weird I mean, tribe, man. I'm telling you. I appreciate I'm humbled by that. Um, and to have your lovely daughter, Elena, to meet her. Yeah. And we'll talk more about her because she actually helped to curate the audio. That's right. She did. Well, I, I might as well go into it now. I mean, when we started this project. Yeah. I mean, I've done, for people who don't know, I've got a company called The Illustrious Company yep. that has been doing um, 3D sound installations. And it's a company with Vince Clark from Erasure. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm he's more of a sleeping partner now because um, he, he lives actually in Brooklyn in Brooklyn right yeah and he was actually in town yeah he, he couldn't was come the playing. other day and he was in town as well yeah. um, and he would have come but he, they had a gig that night so unfortunately they weren't there but now was um, that Erasure that had the gig or just him well Andy was in town for his, I think it was his gig but okay uh, anyway so Sorry. uh so yeah, we do loads and loads of stuff, and uh, uh, we've worked all over the world. Um, we've done actually se several lots of projects in um, in New York. Actually, if you go to the website illustriouscompany.co.uk, um, you'll see the massive range of stuff that we've done. Um, and anyway, so we've done quite a lot of stuff in the past with voices and and kind of social history i suppose uh folk history um but combined with um kind of ambient and electronic music largely um and when we got when we finally agreed to do this um exhibition i thought right i'm not going to mess this up so i did three months of research and i employed eleanor my daughter who's um very good at this sort of stuff she's done it from before to go through 250 hours of recordings of um of of uh, uh of the podcast and pick out the best stories so um that's quite a job as you can imagine um and uh, she's come she... up with some amazing stuff and actually i didn't have to alter any of her recommendations just edit them down a bit to fit and um, yeah. you should see the spreadsheet. It's just ridiculous, you know. I think my eyes would probably cross, uh, uh, yeah, cross yeah, over. No. It was crazy, yeah. crazy hard work. Anyway, she did it. And so thank you, Eleanor. Um, and uh, thank you to Chaz as well, my yes. conspirator, engineer, co-composer, uh, who is not listening at the moment. He's got his headphones on. <laughs> no, but he uh, was, he was there. That. He'll, he'll hear it anyway. Um, uh, this is my studio. So, Love um, it. yeah, who, uh, who is completely on the same page as me. We've done so many projects together now. And, um, so the idea was to create an impressionistic kind of ambience in three dimensional sound, which you'll be able to hear in the location, in the exhibition, uh, itself. And um, which creates a kind of semi-hypnotic kind of dream state that you're that you're able to kind of absorb these stories in, and the the voices kind of pop up all over the place in the exhibition, and uh, they overlap sometimes, and sometimes we've treated them and uh, created tracks out of little phrases. We added some music, and it's it's an hour long, and and we try and keep it uh, varied throughout. And it actually took probably a month to put it all together. Uh, not not every day, eight hours a day, but I mean, you know, uh, on and off. And I'm very very happy with it. And in fact, I'm going to share with you if I can find out how to do it, because you're the host on this, aren't you? 
you could share. Yeah, but I should be listening to more than I should be talking because you're giving beautiful information about this. Well, how I'm the sausage get... is made, so to speak. I'm just trying to get it, stuck, you know, <laughs> the sausage machine as quickly as possible. Um, <laughs> I've just we've just created a QR a, a QR code which enables you to download, not download, to stream the entire uh, soundscape for free. So um, if you I don't know if it's possible, but maybe you could enable me to upload. I could put it on on here. Is this a video podcast or an it audio? It is a video one? podcast. Yeah. So I That's could why share I've got the background what? and everything. So we, yeah, people will see it on YouTube. I'm not very clever. I, I apologize. Are you kidding uh, me? Uh, uh, I mean, you're better at this stuff than I am. You're the one who told me the last time I interviewed you to take my noise suppression off when I tried to play Being Boiled, your <laughs> original version. So oh, I defer. <laughs> I'm going to try it. Uh, I can't. I don't know if well, I can do it. Well, I'll tell you what. I I'll tell you what oh, we do. Oh, oh, I'll oh. have a link to the QR no, code. Hold on. Hold on. No, no, no. Oh. I've seen a bit of a workaround. Hold on. One <laughs> second. One You're going to put your phone up to the screen? Yeah. Yay. That's the beauty of QR codes, right? So here it is. Oh, dear. Is that going to work? Yeah. yeah, right there. Keep it right there. Yep. Yeah. Okay, people, look at that. Hit your phones. I'm, you know what? I'm going to see if my phone. Hang on, Martin. <laughs> We're going to test it out live and in person. We're going to test this out and see if my phone works with this. All right. And Yep. Yeah. Yay! You look, see, never mind this digital world. Look at that. That's fucking awesome. Thank it, you. Listen, it is fucking awesome. And and speaking of which, <laughs> if I may throw my two cents in there about the, about the about the experiencing it for myself. Um, so when I walked in, and I got there early because with public transit, especially getting to and from New York on a weekend, you're never sure what line's going to be working. What it, I got there a little early and you guys were still setting just a few things up. Um, basically, you have four, is it 14 individuals that make up the main narrative thrust audio wise? It's, it's, I think it's more than that, but okay. there are only six, there are, I think, a dozen speakers in there with pictures yeah. on the, of different speakers. So um, when you walk in into this experience, there, like Martin explained about the, the, the ambient music and what have you. I, I don't know if I want to give away, you know, I want people to experience it for themselves. I don't want any spoiler alerts. But there are two people that figure largely. There is one comp uh, composer, very well-known guy, and Peabody alum. Let me let me, let me put as, as a can, faculty can, member. There are no spoiler alerts. I just want to spread the word. So oh, good. Go. Okay, great. So Thomas Dolby. <laughs> demonstrated something during one of your podcast episodes and you took the audio of him going da, 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 da. he was doing the kind of this rough and ready explanation right. of these notes and you turned that in, into a motif yeah. and built ambient music around it if i'm yeah, not that's mistaken right. that's right yeah and it was great because then you heard the drum beats going in there and, and uh, it's really, it was a humor it was it had humor to it it's meant to have humor, yeah. We did the same thing with uh, Kim Wilde. Kim Wilde. Yeah, she was describing the start of, uh, I think it was Kids in America, or one of the sequences, yeah, it was. Yeah. Something from Chaz, um, uh, which is going, D -d 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 -d. I can't do it, but. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Than that. And but we you have to that. hear it for yourself. I mean, people yeah, we have to go out to this thing and hear it for themselves. And then we did a similar thing with, Wolfgang Fleur as well. From he's Kraftwerk. Going, and uh, he's going, uh, his, his current work involves a female singer. Mm -hmm. and, uh, he, he, one of the things he said was, I must have her. I must have her. I thought to myself, I must have her. And I just thought, <laughs> such a fantastic <laughs> phrase because he sang it in a, he didn't sing it. It was like sing, sing along kind of vocal phrasing. So we created <laughs> it out of that as well. But see, that's uh, how the creative mind works like yours, Martin, is that you find the creative possible, you, you found these creative opportunities in these, because these are musicians. And I, I think sometimes musicians, particularly composers, singers, uh, artists, find the musicality within the way yeah. we use our language and speech and cadences 
and immediately your brain goes, oh, fuck, that'd be a great opportunity to turn that into a bit, you know. Well, I but wanted you... to break it up over a period of time so that it doesn't drive the invigilator insane, you know. So the idea is it's like, an, no, I know we've had this problem before. You know, we've had stuff in the Victorian Albert Museum and, and you know, the Tate Modern and all these famous museums. And the problem is if you have something that is continuous yeah, and not changing much, the invigilators complain. Seriously. I don't yeah. blame them either. It would drive me mad. That's why I said to the, the lady who's invigilating our show, I said, look, I appreciate you doing this. And she's getting paid, you know, obviously. But um, I said, you might want to consider having some earplugs. I mean, you can take about when people come into the gallery. Yeah. It might look a bit rude. But uh, it might be worth so you don't go crackers, you know. Yeah. Uh, have them as an option, at least. Have to... them as an option. Because yeah. it's going to play continuously from 12 till 7 in the evening every day. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Wednesday to Sunday, yeah. and uh, after a while, no matter how varied and interesting it is, she will know every microsecond of that hour. Yeah, intimately, it might drive her insane. Frankly, uh, I can tell you one thing. So, uh, if I may interject, when um, you had all these guests, uh, people that you've worked with, sponsors, donors, uh, various people. Um, the twin brothers again. Please yeah. tell me their names again. Uh, Clayton and Parker. Clay, can I? Can I? If and a Clayton Parker. I'm sorry, guys. If I, because I, I, I got to introduce Clayton these people Parker. in kind of a, you know, a, 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 a interesting fashion. They were lovely to talk to when we broke bread after the whole thing was over with. They're, they're such lovely guys to talk to. It's I hard mean, to they, tell the difference, though. Huh? <laughs> it's hard to tell the difference. It, it, one's more talkative than the other. And I yeah. can't remember if it was Clayton or Parker, but um, he, they definitely are are philanthropic, and they really are humanitarians at at the heart of they it. Are. And you, and again, Martin, your your policy in life has been whomever you're working with, no assholes, right? Yeah, that's it. And these guys are you're only as and, remember, and I always say you're only as good as the company you keep and what company you kept in that crowd of people. I mean, just yeah. lovely people to talk art. Arty but grounded, yeah. which is a real hard task to to do both. Well, uh, Parker, Parker and Clayton Calvert is their second name. Um, Calvert. Are both artists. Uh, Clayton is more of a painting artist, and uh, I, I I think Parker is a photographer, and so they came to that world from a kind of curatorial direction and uh, i've been associated actually with the world trade center for as artist in residence for a long time wow. i think over a decade actually wow and um can you imagine and he took us up to his studio their studio wow, wow. which was the size of a football pitch on the on the top floor of of wtc4 or three uh we're looking out the window at pretty much at the same level as the top of the World Trade Center, the new World Trade Center one. Yeah, yeah. It's just I, I completely mind-blowing. Utterly mind I I tell you, my fear of heights... <laughs> I, my, I, oh, you, you wouldn't did it. like it at all. If really? You fear really? Okay. But, I mean, floor-to-ceiling windows all around, and they've got several artists in residence there, but, I mean... What a dream place to be creative in. I mean, good Lord. Inspiring every day, you know? Yeah. Why do I have a feeling that won't be the last time you'll visit it? No, well, I'm hoping that I'll... Uh, I, I, I'll yeah, have hey. the chance to do some more work with those guys because they are... Uh, they inspired me, so... It's a whole idea. It's a, Listen, and this is the whole idea of this whole thing is that because you're a proud socialist... Yes, and I am. You and, and your no whole idea with this thing is to make it as accessible to the to to, to people of yeah. all ilk. That's it. That's and it. and it is a very user friendly uh, gallery. Let me put it that way. So, I mean, there's a simplicity to the, how you had the canvases uh, of the video screens of the yeah. artists that you had, and of the many people, Nile Rogers, yeah. uh, Matt Fink, uh, of the other people you had mentioned, Wolfgang Fleur, uh, Kim Wilde. 
um, Gary Newman yeah. uh, and, and others. But the audio is the star of the show. Yeah. So, in fact, uh, just so people, when they go and understand, because it's so uh, it's not immediately obvious. Yes. There are very what appear to be canvases on the wall. Yeah. Uh, but behind the canvases are, in fact, the speakers that the speakers, are creating right. the soundscape. Yeah. So um, it's a special thing that, that Monitor Audio do. I think they're called, their, their product's called Soundframe. You can go and look it up. On. Okay. Uh, so you can literally have anything you want printed on them. And we, you know, you could have, if you had them in your home, you could have like family photos or anything, you know, yeah. it, or it could be anything or a beautiful scene. Um, so when they said to us that they could do that, because originally I just thought it's going to do, donate some speakers, I thought, I know, we'll make it into, at first sight, you think like it's a traditional art gallery. Yeah. Then you go, it's actually, not. if you think about it for a second, where the hell is all that sound coming from? Yeah, I know. It, 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 and, it, and I will say that, and I know he's there, and if he doesn't want to appear on screen for a hot second, but Ch Chaz Stook, your right-hand man, who helped to tweak the audio and make sure the mixes were just right. And uh, do I understand what, you had a, a video that you had posted on your Facebook account where you guys were setting everything and there were laser uh, markers. That oh, were... yeah, but that's that was just to align the the uh, that was the monitor guys doing their install routine, making sure okay. all the all the things were completely fully aligned. I love all that shit. Yeah, the cat. It's so. So is that to calibrate? You everything? love this. Sorry, Kurt, to interrupt, but you love this because originally when we agreed to do it, I hadn't got a sponsor on board, and we kind of blithely said, "Look, you know, we can put these speakers. Uh, we'll put whatever speakers we have. We, you know, we'll just arrive a few days early, and me and me and Chaz will do it. It would have been an absolute." disaster if we had it done because <laughs> those guys made it this is what they do for a living right and it just right that way it looks the boom right yeah so you know it, it but i i will say and i and i gave feedback it, it immediately you know i i i i felt comfortable to certainly express that there's this seamless vacillation between the one person's interview voice and the music behind it to the next guest because the, these these different voices and the one that I heard because I was there where I got to hear a little preview of the sound uninterrupted before all the guests started coming at yeah. once and that was uh, Dr. Fink Matt Fink from the yeah, revolution hey. uh, and and ironically this is the 40th anniversary of Purple Rain coming up in the Prince Celebration universe and he's gearing up to play at First Avenue uh, in late June next month is he? So, yes, he is. Yes, he is. Oh, I, cool. I, I may see him when I'm there after all the celebration stuff's done. Uh, but he's got that rich, deep, resonant, radio-friendly voice. And yeah. I, you really can pick it out of a lineup orally, you know. Yeah. He, he, he's got just one of those voices. He does. Interestingly, uh, speaking of the purple one, uh, not you, the original purple. <laughs> the, the OG. Um, uh, I, I'm uh, putting out an episode on Friday um, where I interviewed um, Sly Fifth Avenue, who actually played saxophone uh, for Prince. Yes. For, in, yes. In, yeah, for a while. And uh, so he's got his own stuff coming out, which is amazing. It's all kind of, sounds like Gil Evans or something. It's incredible. I, uh, I, I, I want to say he's he worked with Mono Neon. I just the name. I, I'm... Sly Fifth Avenue. It, it is he, he, he anyway. He was the sax player for. Yes, yeah, he. Well, he's had a number of sax players over the years. I'm. I yeah. don't think he was part of the Horn Heads, which Michael Mel. Well, we can talk off air about that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, anyway, no, Sly Fifth, it's all one word. Sly. Number five T H, A V E. Is he so from he... New York? Okay, because Fifth Avenue. I mean, hello, okay. you know. So Sly and and Sly is that a reference to Sly Stone? I I wonder. No, he's called uh, Sylvester. I think his name's Sylvester. Yeah, well, and, and a lot of people still that that's yeah, Sly's yeah, the yeah. nickname for that. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Yeah, because Sly Stallone and I are on a first name basis. Also, I wish. <laughs> oh, you know. Oh, hey, you. Hey, hey, Mark, that was name dropping. You, your audio, your audio is beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Oh, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. Anyhow, <laughs> but we digress. No, but really, it was a, it was a really great. Um, or or it, it, the oral sounds and the mixes were just so cool. And and but there's moments where you left. Now I I do need to mention you had a luminary fashion icon. Uh, yeah. Andre Landros Michel, who was one yeah. of the podcast guests, and he made an appearance. He did, yeah, very kindly, and, and a few of his friends. He's in his entourage, them, yeah. He's he he he's pretty. I mean, he does a lot of very high profile stuff. He does he does stage. He he did me a stage suit, which was your my bespoke stage suit, yeah. And we become like really close friends. I really like him a lot. He's, a, he's another, I another love guy. his his um his fashion work is quite unusual in as much as it's completely aimed at the LGBTQ yep. uh, community and it they're kind of uh all of his models are kind of kind of uh, uh gender fluid kind of yes yeah uh, I, I, and the clothes themselves are kind of gender fluid as well. So I, I I am very happy to support that, uh, and support him, and I think he's really talented. Oh, he's super talented. I I I'd love to talk to him more. Just you as need a gay to get myself. one of his suits, man. You do in purple. Oh my God, what a great idea! No, well, you know, he might do a discount. <laughs> you know, I would love that, but you know, I, so I'm in a Led Zeppelin covers band. I'll shamelessly plug that. Glenn Zeppelin at Facebook. And um, uh, I do wear purple on. Uh, I do wear purple costume or costumes, jackets, and all kinds of stuff. But I like to support the drag community as, as well, yeah. considering what the what the subversion of of gay culture is going on in our country right now. And 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 plug that. So, um, uh, I I will I will reach out to him because uh, you know, as you know, you these are very know. strange times. He's a nice guy, and um... oh, he's lovely to talk to. My God, so down to earth, and you know, in in the fashion world, me not really, you know, I was having my Devil Wears Prada moment. Where, where, why the hell am I here? Not that he's any kind of, uh, you know, yeah, uh, uh, negative no, he's figure a, at all. He's a very nice guy, and one and one of his friends, and my, whose name escapes me now, Leo, I? right? Who he invited along is a big friend with uh, Boy George, yeah, who's in town performing in, in Cabaret, I think. Oh, he, he, yeah, he's doing Moulin Rouge, is he not? Oh, sorry, Moulin Rouge, not not Cabaret, Moulin I, Rouge. Because I was just up in New York not long ago. We went to see the MJ uh, musical. And, right. Uh, really and I saw that advertised, so, yeah. yeah. Was the oh, MJ I'd love to see him in that. Huh? Was the MJ musical any good? Um, yes. It was fucking loud. Let me put it this way. Oh, I don't like that. Don't Earplug. Like well, I carry with me in my keychain. There's a brand of earplugs that I use for my gigs, and when I go to see shows and stuff like that, called Eargasm. I've heard of them. Yeah, they're almost like uh, in-ear monitor, you know, uh, without the in-ear in-ear electric gear. So they're they're plugs. like attenuators, and are they the ones where you can choose the different dB levels. Well, this all... not that sophisticated. It's like all that without the the tech hardware in it. Right, just right, a, right. just natural filtration, right, but right. it's really pretty good. Yeah, but, but no, the musical the, itself the is good. With the, the problem with those is, does it actually, uh, does it actually cut the top end though? Not as much as you would think. Not not really. It cuts all that booming bass that really gives your eardrums right. a thrashing. In my experience as an acoustic designer, yes, it's really the the kind of upper mid range that really fucks your ears up yeah physically they well, one one to one one to two k um i'm gonna have to have you design out. me so andre's gonna design me a bespoke outfit and you're gonna design me some bespoke earplugs <laughs> <laughs> and you're gonna give me a lot of money mm. okay this is where <laughs> you know what they say wish in one hand shit in the other see which one gets filled first martin <laughs> So, uh, anyhow, I, I, so getting to meet you in person, I just have to say, was 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 genuinely just a, a thrill. And, and likewise, and lo lovely, lovely time. And Chaz as well, who was there. Yeah, where at Chaz? Come and say goodbye to the podcast oh. viewers. 
view up. Here he is. The Chaz, man so ladies and gentlemen, Chaz Stook, Martin's right hand man, sound engineer, partner in crime. Chaz, it was I'm great meeting you, man. Yeah. Yeah, really good meeting you too, Kurt. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm I'm looking I'm eyeing February twenty twenty five. Yeah. Okay, cool. So yeah. Yeah. Well okay. for London. Yeah. Uh Ealing Hanwell area most likely. But actually, actually I have to uh, go from Didsbury, Manchester for this ninetieth birthday celebration of a friend's mum. And then uh you know, the national rail gets you there in what, three, three and a half yeah. hours to London. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, we'll take you into so Yeah, yeah, fun. we'll meet up for sure. We'll have some fun. Good troubles, my middle name, gents. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Cool. Cool. Thanks. Right. I've got to let him get on with some work. Yeah, get on. Let, Charles, don't let me don't let me hold you back, man. Cheers. Good Talk to you later, man. Well, thank you for that, Martin. And thanks, Chaz. And he I know he doesn't like coming on camera. Oh, he does. He loves it. What are you talking about? He's the right show. <laughs> He's, talking, he's going to be doing some acting courses soon. Uh, he wants to be, and he wants to do stand up, and I think he might even do clown training. <laughs> no, I'm not joking. Really cool. He's interested in it at least. I I'll tell you off the air. I have a friend who was tr classically trained at the Bolshoi. Really, as a, as a theatrical. I have some op opera stories. You'll love them. You'll love them. But that oh. that I right now I want to bring us back to the Electroverse because that's. But listen, you know I don't mind the waffle, and I know you don't yeah. mind it either. Yeah. But I okay. want to make sure that we're plugging to the max. Your your oh, wonderful. Oh, absolutely, yeah. You know, um, but now uh, on the horizon, if we go from the Electroverse to the Heaven Seventeen Averse. Yeah. I know you've got some upcoming. You 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 had a series of dates in the fall this past fall, all over Europe. Yeah, and we obviously we did the US last year as well, and yeah. we're looking at some more dates in twenty twenty five for um, America. Uh, but um, when does this go out? I'm gonna as soon as I can this week because you, right. I want to plug your your you know Electroverse right. thing. So, uh, cool. Okay, so if it comes out before, we're actually playing at the Cruel World Festival in Pasadena. California uh, mm -hmm. uh yeah, on Saturday pretty sure it is and oh. then we're traveling to San Francisco and we're playing the oh god I always forget what it's called it's like the San Francisco Music Hall or something yeah oh, very things, famous venue yeah things change names and hands all the time especially yeah. if there's a financial institute or something yeah backing it. anyway yeah. that's happening this weekend so okay, cool. um just to let you know um, that we'll be there. And we're doing lots of uh, other stuff this year, lots of festivals in the summer in the UK, um, some a bunch of stuff in yeah. Europe too. Uh, so, yeah, we're busier than ever, really. And uh, the rest of the guy, the, the rest of the gang in Heaven 17, how's Glenn keeping? How's everybody doing? He's all right. Yeah, he's busy working on his TV stuff all the time. Yeah, and um, the girls, um, the the are backing vocalists Kelly and yeah. Rachel. Oh, they wonderful! They wonderful. do stuff with um, Soft Cell and Mark Armand and oh. various other people. Um, Flo does some touring opportunities as well uh, as keyboard player. Yeah. Um, they recently did. Oh God, what did she do? She did. Some stuff. Oh, I can't remember. She's worked with Holy Holy, who are the kind of Bowie tribute thing with Tony Visconti and Glenn singing. Glenn and singing stuff. and Glenn singing yeah. like a rock god, as you say. And he re he really does. They and they really focus on the early David Bowie specifically. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, it's not yeah. so much post Let's Dance. It's it's uh, all the early stuff. Yeah. All the uh, stuff I don't know how much more of that there's going to be, to be honest. But uh, we'll see. Um, what else? So, yeah, so everybody's busy all the time. Fundamentally, and, and I know you, you. I know you keep a five ring circus going on at all times as well. Yeah, please make it stop. Uh, <laughs> no. Uh, but the no, the podcast takes up a lot of time. Not not a lot of time, but 
it's con- it's a continuous drip feed of effort, if you know what I mean. Well, and, let me plug that for a second, and and let yeah. me uh, it's sorry to cut you off there, Martin, but let's plug right. this for a hot second too, based on yeah. your wonderful autobiography. Yeah. Available in paperback, audiobook, hardcover, and yeah. and let me tell you, the audiobook's worth getting because you spent a lot of time and effort getting that audiobook together. It was a nightmare. <laughs> don't ever then, read the audiobook. Like if you ever do a book and they ask you to read it, don't do it. It took me three solid eight-hour days to read that book, uh, and because what the way they do it is, you read it, and if you stumble over anything yeah. or you get the inflations wrong, they stop you immediately. And you reread it, and that happened. I would estimate five hundred times in three days. I was going insane, literally, by the end. Because it's like, if you think about it, I know it now, but I didn't know before, it's like acting, right? Yes, it is. When you, write, when you write something, you've got the kind of inflections in your head and and you just and people can read it at their own pace and do it. You've got to do that heavy lifting for the people who are listening to the audio book. So I'm lucky. I've got a voice that's quite interestingly modulated as... Most yeah, singers. I've said as such. Yeah, to you. Uh, you and, and so I think, I think, fingers crossed, that it's quite interesting to listen to. But the the um, the downside of that is that you have to keep sounding engaged with the whole thing. I'll give you yeah. the perfect perfect example of not how not to do it. Is um, uh, who's the guy who did um, Friends? You know, the famous uh, guy who invented Friends. Brooks, what's it called? Oh. Anyway, you know. Anyway, that dude, James did, Brooks. Uh, James Brooks. So he did his autobiography reading. You know, yeah. the audible version. And the guy is really interesting. He's got a fascinating story. He's done some incredible stuff, which has made millions upon millions of people very happy. But you should not be reading an audiobook yeah. because he's got the world's dullest voice. <laughs> Uh, and you so, know, and, and, and there's certain people who should not do well. Uh, but I'm going to tell you though, Martin, and I know that though you, and I've heard bad examples of that because I'll give you an example. Alan Leeds, James Brown's tour manager for many years, and um, uh, Prince's tour manager, D'Angelo, Chris Rock's tour manager. Yeah, yeah. Currently, uh, he had somebody else read his book for him, and there are examples of how not to have another person read it. In, in oh. turn, because this guy kept getting Maceo Parker's name wrong. Oh. He would say Maceo, the whole no. fucking book. And I'm going, ah! Now, I t- interviewed his brother, Eric, and I told him this. They didn't even know they did an audio book for his book. They never told, the publishing company never told him that they did an audio book. Oh, well, that's just bad, bad form. Well, you know, and, and I told him, and he goes, Holy shit! They said Maceo's name wrong. You know, I that's mean, that's disastrous, right? It's like it, it's like it's it's as though somebody spelled your name with an I instead of a. Oh y. no no no! I yeah, I, I, throughout the book, yeah. So yeah. you know, yeah. so you know, or or like saying, Glenn Gregory, or you know, <laughs> or, or Ian... clean. No, what do they call him? People who get his name wrong, they call him Greg. Oh, Greggy, a number Greggy. Of people come up to him and say, hi, Greg. Nice to meet you. And I'm going, no, not so much. But from now on, you could pr- refer to me as Keith. Purple Keith <laughs> podcast. There you go. <laughs> I mean, but we digress, Martin. But we Purple digress. Purple Keith. Purple Keith. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Okay. Oh, God. I'll take the... Listen, turn that into a soundscape. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, I think the I think there might be a little copyright infringement involved. That you know, the 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 estate will come for you for that one. Yeah, but sure. but I will tell you, um, for somebody who's an American listening to your uh, book, and I'll also give I'll also because he's also a Hachette uh, published author, right. Rob Halford, Judas Priest. Okay, Confess and Biblical, his two books that he has out. If he didn't read them. I would have been pissed, and I'll tell you why. Because so much of the cultural background of the slang in Sheffield versus the yeah. slang in in the Midlands, 
is very different, and he spoke yam yam throughout the entire book. <laughs> and you know, my dear friend John Gallagher of the British metal band Raven, who's a Geordie. Yeah. You know, if I Geordie. didn't hear that in, or, or at least you would have to hire somebody that knows what the fuck they're talking about because you yeah. have a very specific vernacular. That's right. So I, I humbly say, the book would not, you would, nobody would have done it justice but you. From I, a cultural I, standpoint. And to agree, unless it was one of my actor friends who live in Sheffield. Uh, this, right. This I could think of. But I've got an interesting, a funny story for you. So yeah. last week, uh, I think I mentioned it before, I, I was in uh, Frankfurt, no, sorry, Stuttgart sure. uh, in Germany to see um, the German version of Tina the Musical in which... <laughs> In which I am a character. Character. And uh, and it was, uh, the dialogue was in German, right? So my character would speak in German, <laughs> uh, which is an interesting experience, watching yourself being portrayed in German. Out of body? Yeah. So I'm watching this, and afterwards I said to the cast who I was talking to, or somebody in the cast, I said... Um, what was he saying that was that was creating such hilarity? In because I mean I don't know if you've seen Tina the Musical. It's very good. Not uh, yet. No. But there there are there isn't much light heartedness in it. It's kind of quite weighty a lot of it. Yeah. Uh, but I'm like the I am like the fucking light relief. The comic in, relief, huh? In the whole musical, and uh, I said, why? I know it's normally the English version is kind of raises a titter, but. Um, in this, it was, they were absolutely rolling in the aisles. And I'm going, what was it that I was saying that was causing right. such a... And he said, well, you were speaking in the local uh, Swabian accent, right? <laughs> Which is the, the uh, uh, Swabian is like that part of southern, south, whatever. Süd, Süddeutsch versus Hochdeutsch up in the north, yeah, right? Yeah, kind of thing, Swabian right. anyway. So um, and apparently it was quite broad, and so the audience recognised themselves in it, and thought it was hilarious. And I thought that was quite interesting. And and and, and a nice touch for the local theatre goers of that area that somebody actually paid attention to that part. Exactly. Very clever. Whoever did it knew this. Uh, thought, well, we need a regional accent to make it clear this wasn't like part of the. London elite who was helping Tina at that point in her career. No, so they just... I mean, now in America, I don't remember when the run, because this musical came out when, Martin? Because I, I, I don't have my... Well, it's, it just celebrated six years in the UK. Okay. Uh, so I don't know when it was on in America. Probably it's touring at the moment in America, I believe. I need to, you know what? I need to go and find it. So again, Tina Turner, again... It was on Broadway for a while. Yeah. So, yeah. But let's not. And, and it it were it is it bears repeating that you had an instrumental hand in helping to resurrect her career. Where and, and I don't mind mentioning it again because, goddamn, the 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 version of Al Green's "Let's Stay Together." <laughs> yeah, I'm very proud of it. Yeah. And even and Al David Green Boy's himself said it was a good version. So. Yeah, yeah. You said you got to talk to him, correct? Yeah. Yeah, uh, you know he's one of my he's one of my all time you know uh, heroes you know in the soul music world. I mean he's just absolutely, you know he's great. Um, do you have any um, artists that you're currently doing anything for production wise that you yeah, can talk I've about? Just, I've just finished an album with a singer called Kate Jackson, who's um, just to let people know, I've done literally dozens of albums produced yeah. by various people. Yes, but I kind of, I kind of I kind of stopped doing albums for people in the early two thousands because it it just did just it seemed that record companies weren't willing to pay the amount of money that I required. Yep. To dedicate the amount of time that I think was you know and I'm not a greedy person, I don't but yeah. I you know, it, it got to the point where they were ex they were expecting people uh, like me, who've got a very good track record, sold sixty million records, 
to do things speculatively and then they go, okay, we'll take it up or not and then pay at the end. I'm going, no, I'm not doing that. Yeah. So I just did this. Uh, this is the first album I've done in 20 years. Uh, full album. Wow. Okay. Uh, I mean, for for a third party. So yeah. Kate Jackson, yeah. she used to be in a band called The Long Blondes, um, oh, no. who I liked from Sheffield. And she was also on the third BEF Music of Quality and Distinction album. Okay. Doing doing a cover version of Picture This, which I think a, a kind of ambient version. If you've not heard it, uh, try and find it. So it'd be under BEF, British mm-hmm. Electric Foundation, uh, featuring Kate Jackson, Picture This, you know, the Blondie song. I mean... It, it's a slowed down kind of haunting thing and it's so amazingly beautiful the way she performs it i, anyway, I will immediately listen yeah. to it so um mm-hmm. i agreed to do this album it's the first album she's written herself and oh. it's all ele- and it's all electronic and it could be coming out later in the year um so keep a lookout for that it's 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 really good um apart from that i've done lots and lots of remixes for actually um one of the um, fallouts of doing all this uh, yeah. podcasting thing is I get to obviously talk to a lot of famous people. And I often, if I admire them and I like their work, I often offer to do a free um, a free uh, remix for them. So And you, and, and you offer, in, in, in exchange for the time that they gave you, yeah. you know, that's a yeah. beautiful gesture. Yeah. So there is actually on Spotify Ooh. a playlist which is available of all these remixes that I've done uh, together with Chaz and another um, engineer of mine called Tom Gilleron. Uh We've done a bunch of these remixes, and I think they hold together as a body of work, actually. Uh, so if you go and search Martin Ware remixes on Spotify, it should you should be able to find it. Is it just on Spotify? No, no other platforms like Amazon uh, no, Music or Apple. On Spotify, yeah. Okay, so cool. Well, we'll find that. I mean, I have a Spotify account. I have a paid Amazon account, logistical right. purposes. But yeah. uh, I will somehow we'll get a link put up for that as well. Well, I'm no great advocate of Spotify for obvious reasons. No, but I know. The most I practical uh, way of distributing things. You can actually still, I believe, get a free version of Spotify if you're willing to yes. willing to accept the ads. Um, yeah. So, uh, you know, anyway. No, I understand the whole, uh, you know, what they're not paying people at. I mean, to say it's a pittance is a gross understatement. Oh, and I, uh, I'm not going to go into it. I'd be here all day, so. Oh, <laughs> you don't Take have a whole me. day to be here. Support the work. Um, yes. Come for the, come for the, you know, support support the arts in any way you can. And speaking of supporting arts again, let me let me just plug again the adventures in the Electroverse at the Oculus. Yep. That is at level C one at the South Concourse. Yep. It's quite and, easy to find once you get in there. I'll, oh, it's I'll... very easy. Yep. And if you take public, and of course, New York with public transit. You can get the subway trains if you're coming from a uh, Penn Station. I'll I'll just put this out firsthand because I did this. If you go to Penn Station, you, whatever trains you end up taking, I took the New Jersey Transit up. It's very easy to get the number one, number two uh, subway of- trains, and the mall itself, the Oculus Mall itself, has easy access. I caught the last train, <laughs> 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 but we had a lot of fun, really. Just, oh, just good. a ton of fun. And again, it oh, upside down. Electroverse. This is going on from this fifth of May, which we just celebrated Cinco de Mayo, and it's going on until June fifth. It is open from twelve to seven. Wednesdays to Sundays. Wednesdays to Sundays. Thank you. And close Mondays, Tuesdays for yeah. I guess maintenance or. Whatever. I don't know. Don't ask me. <laughs> yeah, Wednesdays. Well, you know, t- and actually, I'll tell you why, Martin. In the in the states, and this is be- somebody who works in retail. Myself, I work in fine wine and spirits in Pennsylvania. Mondays and Tuesdays in retail shops in general tend to be very slow days. You get very little foot traffic. Oh well, that's it then. Isn't it? And as we get on towards the weekend, yeah, it gets busier and busier. It gets busier and busier. So th- I think that's probably the logistics behind that. I've got a question for you. 
and Ant, one. Yeah. Uh huh. Do you do you stock um the Francis Ford Coppola? Yes. Uno, is it Uno? The very famous one. I mean, God, this was twenty five years ago. I I had I had it at the uh, red one. I, I had it at um, Smith and Walensky. And it was, I think it was a hundred dollars a bottle lens, or God knows what it is now. It must be no, or a thousand. And uh, no, we don't. I we don't carry it in the shops, but I think we can special order it. So what I will do, I'll, I'll check that out for you. I'll check. Find out how much it costs, and because uh, that was the best red wine <laughs> I've ever tasted in my life, and I am an expert on Italian wine. Well. So. Gee, I can't imagine how that is. I mean, you only lived in Venezia, Italy for 28 bloody years, Martin. Yeah, that's right. I mean, yeah, you know you're... Everywhere in Italy. So, I've, you know, I'm, I'm not a big fan of very expensive wines. I'm, I mean, I like them, but they're not really worth it because it's all marketing. But, you know, I prefer the... Um, oh, here we go. This is wine talk. But the Do Geogra it! Do it! This is the... Ge uh, I like the Geographica Typica. Oh, e sure. Uh, uh, which are like a quarter of the price uh, of the DOC wines. Oh, and listen I like to you. Uh, uh, and uh, I, I, re I really like that. Having said that, if you ever go to Verona mm -hmm. in Italy... A Veronese uh, is delicious. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, this is a bit niche, I know. But if you ever been, if you're ever in that neck of the woods, there's a place... And I was tipped off by an Italian friend of mine called, and it sounds like some kind of shitty wine shop, but it's not. Uh, it's called Bottega del Vino, mm -hmm. and it's a restaurant as well. But the food's okay, and it's not terribly expensive. But in the basement, and it's only it's not accessible to the general public. It's only because my friend knew the sommelier there. <laughs> yeah, is like an enormous range of wine cellars where yeah. they keep. The real stuff, right? Yeah. And they have a, a private dining room <laughs> where they, they've they had Bill Gates down there. They have Prince Philip. They've had, oh, you know, Jesus. it's like literally cost tens of thousands to hire this room. So and when are we going? You get, you get to taste the best and most. And their wine list is like Harry fucking Pot Potter's <laughs> encyclopedia, right? It's that thick. Love it. They have just about every vintage of every uh, every uh, Italian wine that's ever been made. Plus, they have original bottles of, uh, of, <clears throat> of, of single varietals from... They, they've even got stuff like... There was 10 bottles discovered that were walled up in a wall to keep them from the Nazis when they invaded. Oh, Jesus. Of, Jesus. of a variety that no longer exists. Hmm. And so these 10 bottles, they cost £10,000 each, right? And they said, well, what happens if it's off? And they said, well, you buy the risk, you know? <laughs> you, you do. And well, and well, with red wines uh, in general, if there, if, if there's a high tannic level to them, over time, those tannins will compensate for that. And right. mellow out over time, which is the whole idea. Red wine, you know. And I'm a red wine guy as well. Oh, me too. Yeah. And um, we we can talk about Portugal too if you want to talk about Portugal. Oh, I don't know. Portugal, yeah. And Spain and and all that, but because they're really kicking France's ass in terms of being able to get um, you know. All right. Can I say something about please. France? Right. France are very effectively marketed themselves from a wine perspective yes. for a very long time yes there is there's a higher uh, there's higher variety of <laughs> original vinicultures yeah in italy yep. by a factor of about four yep and the reason why we're not so familiar with them you probably are but the general public is because yep. a lot of what they produce they keep in-house they keep for the italian population Absolutely. or even more like because frankly, they do, a lot of them don't produce enough to to justify the to mass market. distribute. Yeah, yeah, to mass distribute. So, my advice is for a similar price, you're likely to get better quality uh, in Italy and places like Portugal and Spain yeah. than you would. 
from or uh, Chile and Argentina for that matter. Or Chile, yeah, but a lot of the Chilean and Argentinian. Welcome to the wine podcast. A lot of Chilean <laughs> and Argentinian uh, producers are using, uh, you know, mass production methods, steel vats, and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Kind of lost. yeah. Australia lost, too. Yeah, and they've lost a lot of the kind of character, I think. Yeah. Um, but anyway. However, this is ironic because I don't drink at home at all. I don't have any alcohol in the house. I've I've stopped because of, I have diabetes, so I have to be careful. Yeah. I like a glass of wine when I'm eating. You know that's bad. Well, you'll go out. You'll have a you'll have a drink socially, but you won't keep yeah. it in the house. No, no, no. And no, I no. get it. I get it. And it's and the reason is I love it. I listen. <laughs> you got to mind your p's and q's on that. Um, yeah. but thank. See again. When we talked last time on the podcast, I said, you know, you got you can literally talk about anything, and here we are talking about wine, <laughs> which I love. Yeah. But we'll talk. Listen, but the Cop Coppola, just as a fun fact, Coppola, um, sold his name uh, quite a few years ago to the people who make Bota box box wines. Oh no, really? Yes. And he he was one of the first he and and people will remember in California he was the first celebrity or figurehead to have his name on a bottle of wine and he bought Inglenook which he still owns Inglenook. Right, I don't know what he, that is. It's a wine in California. Um, oh, okay. So you may not get that as much over there, but no, I'll tell you who's I've just as stingy, it. Martin. Not not just the Italian. The Italians we get much more from them. The Germans do not import. Tenth of what they have over there. It's all right. To, to the States. I wish we had all the different, uh, you know, we get some Silvaners. We do get um, some other Rotwines, but not to, to like the Carl Re stuff. No. You know, that's like Moscato for kids, you know. I mean, no offense. I mean, not it's a lot of same, times. It's the same as going to Mexico. Because uh, uh, I used to really like tequila. Oh, and uh, I said, uh, until I had an unfortunate experience with it one time, it put me off. But anyway, um, and when I, I spent a month in Mexico City doing a sound installation, and oh wow, the first thing that happened when I landed with jet lag, and it was a morning meeting, business meeting, <laughs> is they said uh, you got we're going to do this thing, uh, whatever the Spanish equivalent is, tricolore, right for the three colors of the flag yeah. sure and it, it's basically uh spicy tomato juice um lemon juice and then tequila oh sorry in the tequila in the middle so does it come with a prior does it come with it a meprazole a ring for the for the reflux because dear god <laughs> yeah so anyway i did this said this is what we do for breakfast here and i'm going Oh, this is going to be a fun trip. <laughs> and, uh, not a Mexican oh. breakfast, you know. Anyway, oh. anyway, it's like a blood. It's like their version of a Bloody Mary, for God's sake. Yeah, precisely. Right, but they're in okay. separate little shot glasses. Right, it's oh, really Lord Jesus. Yeah, but a they, you know, the Italian, flight. The Italian equivalent of that is um, a double espresso and a grappa. It's called oh. a. It's called a Roman breakfast. Jesus God! If you need to clean your insides out and exercise uh, a few demons, uh, I imagine that'd be a good way to do it. You've not had a good. You, you've not had the right grappa, mate. Oh, uh, I have no, no, no. We and that's and to your point, Martin. We only get a limited amount of the grappa in this in the states here because no, no. You'll, you'll have the big brands like Nonino and all that, but they're, they're locally because it started off in the fifties. Do you know this? It's mm. been commercially produced. It was not that old uh, because it was just what they made at the end of the wine production process right. for their exactly. own family or, or locals and stuff. That's part of what sticks their communities together, right? I mean, you just – do you hear Do you hear this guy? I mean, you, you could wear so many – you could have been a viticulturalist. You know that, right? <laughs> I'm into analogy, yes. Yes. You're I, like the science, I like the science of it. You like the oniophilic oeuvre. <laughs> oh, I'd say. Excuse Ooh. me. 
I'm getting my my nipples are becoming like glass cutters at this point, Martin. <laughs> I, thought it, I thought it might tickle you, you pickle. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> don't take much these days. <laughs> I'm afraid. <laughs> oh Lord, I, I, you, 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 you saucy Ming, you saucy Ming. <laughs> I mean, but seriously, folks, this this is what you get if you it, it, in virtual. And in, in 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 person, this is what you get when you talk to Martin because literally, he's not just waffling for waffling's sake. You know your stuff about all a variety of subjects because you. So, what really gave you the wanderlust? What to go to Italy? No, in general, what general? What... I just I'm just obsessed with new experiences and new, and travel actually. And uh, I'm still am. I, uh, I, I every year, myself and my three best male friends, we go and pick a different city in the world, and we go there mm -hmm. for a long weekend, and we yeah. hang out, and um, and uh, we always try and keep it uh, varied, and we're starting to spread out even further and further. And the next thing we're looking at is. Um, is uh medellin and and uh, colombia yeah uh not for the cocaine we don't do that anymore oh please of course not no 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 uh but just as uh we're fa i'm fascinated with south america anyway basically Spent uh, a lot that, of that's one place Peru i've not been to colombia and and stuff and really and chile i was looking looking at my friend simon lowry he works for the european southern observatory as a in the you know astronomical department yeah he's a well-known he, he gets to go out to uh to Paranel, where the world's largest telescope is and he invited me down there it's not open to the public right and it was a life-changing experience so i've spent quite a lot of time in <clears throat> in chile as well i love it down south america is amazing I, what is on your list of places that you have not yet visited if if I, if you had to go, if you had twenty four hours to live and you had an ability with a Star Trek like transporter room to be beamed uh, anywhere that you haven't gone to, where well, would you can go? I have a can I have a week? Sure. Yeah, let's say a week. A All week. Right. I've not really done Southeast Asia, so okay. and Japan and Australia and China. Chaz has. Chaz, no, yes, because he's yeah. you know. Got more money than me, but <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I've not done Southeast Asia. I'd like to, and India, yeah, India, I think, is my oh, answer. Okay. Yeah. So I, I, I uh, ironically, my wife just before I met her, twenty five, oh, thirty years ago now. Uh, wow, we just come from a like a month traveling on our own in India. Can you believe? I wow, sort of knew I had to marry this woman. And um, <laughs> and the story she told me just made me want to go there. And she said, "Well, you know, it's a lot of poverty and a lot of you know a, a lot of extremes." And I'm going, "I'm a, I'm kind of, kind of an extremes kind of person." But 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 a uh, very densely populated. But for you, yeah. that's not I don't, I don't imagine not a terrible problem because you're in a terribly dense city. Not not as much. Not as, as much, maybe. Okay, yeah. Well, having been the most densely populated place I've been to is um, Osaka. In Japan, uh, of course, yeah. It was in, in Japan, which was like everywhere. Walking down the street was like a a football crowd. You know, it was just ridiculous. Well, you cross the streets in Tokyo, it's like 13,000 people at once doing this cross-stream uh, thing. Yeah, I need a little bit of space. I mean, I'm not, you know... <laughs> Yeah. Well, that's that's brilliant. Hey, um, I'm gonna have to go. Yeah, I was just gonna say. Had to shut down. Uh, thank you so much again, Martin, for for your time, for this conversation, for the fellowshipping. Yeah. Uh, no, I really great. appreciate it. And again, folks, uh, I'll have this uh, up and and uh, <clears throat> as soon as I can, Martin. It, Adventures in the Electroverse again. The soundscape display of over at the WTC Culture Club. It is at the Oculus, downtown New York City, near the World Trade Air Trade Center area. 
and it is at level C1. It is South in Concourse. the South Concourse, and it is open from Wednesday through Sunday, 12 to 7. That's it. And there's that QR code. If you go onto this page, the QR code uh, is available to... Uh, and again, sponsored by... Sponsored by Monitor Audio Group. Monitor, thank you. The NYC Culture Club. Excellent. All right. Thanks again for tuning into the Purple Curd podcast. Uh, next steps uh, I'll, I'll have coming up will uh, involve the Purple Kingdom, Purple Universe. So stay tuned for that. Please hit like and subscribe. Have a great day.